Good morning. Welcome Good morning. to Our Saviors. So glad to have you here today with us. If you're in the building here, thank you for coming. And if you're online, thank you for connecting. So um, I am Lisa Rick and Kassler. I'm the director of Congregational Ministries. Today you will also see Pastor Jeff Beebe and Pastor Kiri Solberg. And uh, if you would like to connect with us, there are blue cards in front of you. This is the example. Okay, and if, you, um, if you're online, you can connect online under the tab Connect. So if you want to just drop a note or connect with other information, please do so, or you can always call, text, or email us. So many ways. 
Well, we just want to highlight a few announcements here. Uh, today, we have our new member orientation. If you've been coming and connecting and want to make it official that we are your home church, please um, come to that if you'd like, even if you haven't signed up. But if you are also connecting, but you can't make it today, but you want to transfer in, we also have information about that. You can talk to me about that or pick up the information at the reception desk. Also this afternoon, we have Trunk and Treat. Yes, such a fun time. It will be in the, uh, obviously, the parking lot where the trunks will be. And um, that's this evening, and it's open to, or this afternoon. It's open to this community. It's open to all the community. So we encourage you to come back, and if you dress up, even more fun. Now this week, we also have some things. We're gathering uh, things for the turkey baskets, the confirmation students will be putting those together. And so we are still gathering supplies throughout this week, and you can bring it next week as well. And then that will be distributed throughout our community here too. And also on Friday, we have a children, youth, and family gathering for watching Up, which is an amazing movie. If you haven't seen it, you should. And if you have, it's always good to see it again. So you can come here on Friday. It'll be out in the gathering space if you want to bring a pillow or a sleeping bag or what. And just it's, it is open to all to come for that. And then next week, we have our Looking Ahead and the Christmas concert is coming. And the tickets for that will be going on sale next week. So next Sunday, you can stop by at the desk for that. And also, just a quick reminder, we get an extra hour of sleep next week. We're going to be falling back. So if you're here and you think it's 8 o'clock and the coffee's not on, it's not 8 o'clock. That's the way it goes. So anyway, now I invite you to rise and greet each other with a hello or a peace sign or a wave. And In celebration of Reformation Sunday, let us sing, A Mighty Fortress is Our God.
celebrate uh, the start of the Reformation where Martin Luther dared to nail his 99 theses on a church door um, in defiance of the Catholic Church. Um, and you guys probably know more about the history than I do, but I do know that he had the courage to stand up and say something when, um, when something was wrong. In this song uh, that we learned last week, um, it says, if the truth cuts like an arrow, I will say it anyway, because here I am, Lord, send me. If it means that they'll reject me, Lord, I will still obey. Here I am, Lord, send me. And may we all have uh, the courage and strength that Martin Luther did so long ago to speak the name of Jesus um, and the truth out in this world, which is so chaotic um, and so divisive today. So let's sing together, send me. If it's bandaging the broken, washing filthy feet, here I am, Lord, send me. If it's loving one another, even when we don't agree, here I am, Lord, send me. Send me on the 
send me. Let us pray. Jesus, you, you call us to do challenging things, just like Martin Luther in 1517, when he started a new movement. And like Paul preaching the gospel despite threat of persecution in prison. If the truth cuts like an arrow, Lord, we will say it anyway. And if it means we are rejected, we will continue to be your hands and feet. Give us courage, Lord. In your name we pray. Amen. Well, I invite all the kids to come forward for a kid's message and offering. Come on up. And Amber and Abby have the jugs up here, so if you brought offering, you can put them in those. Good morning. Oh, I like your sparkly shoes. Good morning. Thank you. Good morning. I didn't. That's just a ring. Yeah. Oh, fell in my pocket. Well, good morning. I got a couple. Did you guys need the extra hour of sleep today? You'll get it next week. Let's try it again. Good morning. There it is. I have something really, really important to tell you. Okay, so can you take your listening ears out and put them on? Turn them on. Are you ready? Yeah. You didn't say Did you hear it? No, you didn't say anything. Were you listening? Yes. All right, let's try it again. I didn't listen to it. You didn't listen? Okay, try this time. Ready? My, it's, my mouth is moving too fast for you to listen? Oh, gosh, you caught me. I wasn't saying anything out loud. I wanted to see if you could hear me still. I was. It was a little tricky. But I have a question for you. Was there anyone who could hear me? Barely. Barely? Levi said, God. God knows. Because the Bible says that God knows what we're thinking even before we say it. God knows our words even before we say them. And I think that's really incredible. So here's my question. How does God listen to that? How does God listen? We can't even hear it when I'm thinking it or I'm saying a prayer inside and talking to God. How does God hear that? And what if we all thought something at the same time. Should we try it? I want you to think of a few words that you want to say to God, and on the count of three, we're all going to think them as a prayer at the same time. And everybody out there can try too. Are you ready? Do you got something? I don't know. Okay, keep it inside. We're going to say it like a three-word prayer. Ready? One, two, three. Did you guys hear that? You didn't hear anything, did we? But who heard all of it? God, how in the world does God do that? What do you think, Elsie? Because he's everywhere. God is everywhere. And he can even maybe go on your brain and listen to you. Maybe even go right in your brain. <laughs> maybe. Now, does God have a body like we do? No. 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 God has got not anymore. That's a good point because God did come into the world as a person named what? Jesus. Jesus. Right? And God also came into this world as a dove, as wind, as fire, as all kinds of things. Now, when we listen to each other, what do we have to use? Words. We use our words. And if we're listening, what do we use? Our ears. Our ears and then we know what's being said because of our brain. brain and our brain processes that. Now, because of that, we're kind of limited, right? Now, I want you to think about that prayer you said a little bit ago that you said silently inside. And on the count of three, we're going to all say it out loud at the same time. All right? Everybody got something? A few, few words of a prayer. We're going to say it out loud at the same time. Ready? One, two, three. All right, you all got that, right? Did you hear everything? Were you not listening? 
Why didn't you hear all of it? Because everyone was talking at the same time. We're limited, aren't we? Because we're using our ears and our brain. But remember, we said God's not a human, right? God is God. And God doesn't have to listen with ears and process with a brain. So whether we keep things between us and God and we talk quietly inside or we all talk out loud at the same time, God listens and God hears. And I think that's really incredible. Because it can be kind of confusing as humans. We're like, how does God hear everyone in the world at the same time? But God does. And God listens to us in that kind of an incredible way and knows what we're going to say even before we've thought it. And it's so important for us to share those things with God. Do you have a question? Where's the pastor? Where's the pastor? Yeah, she usually says it. Oh, they're right there. I mean, it's a legit question. <laughs> well, um, so that's listening. And it's important for us to keep talking to God and know that God hears everything that we have to say because we're all important and all of our thoughts and prayers are important and God has that time and the ability to hear all of us. Do you have a question? Okay, yeah. one more question. Oh, you can hear God talking in your body? No, I can't. You can't. Yeah, and sometimes when we talk to other people, that's a way of us hearing what God has to say too. When we're talking about the Bible and we're like, oh, I hadn't thought about that. Or maybe we're sharing some hurts with somebody and they share some love with us. And that's a way of God sharing through other people too. Huh. All right, well, let's pray together. Will you repeat after me? Dear God, Thank you for loving us. Thank you for listening. And thank you for hearing us. Help us to remember to always talk to you. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, friends, if you're going to kids' ministries, we're going to go out that door, or you can find your families that you came with. Thank you. Well, today's gospel is from the gospel of Luke, the 18th chapter. As he approached Jericho, a blind man was sitting by the roadside begging. When he heard a crowd go by, he asked what was happening. They told him, Jesus of Nazareth is passing by. Then he shouted, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Those who were in front sternly ordered him to be quiet, but he shouted even more loudly, Son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stood still and ordered the man to be brought to him. And when he came near, he asked him, What do you want me to do for you? He said, Lord, let me see again. Jesus said to him, Receive your sight. Your faith has saved you. The Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, I got a smile out of this one this week, and I'm thinking you might need one too, so here goes. An older gentleman thinks his wife is losing her hearing. So he calls the doctor about it, and the doctor says he can do a little experiment to determine the severity. Ask her a question from the next room in a normal tone of voice, and then keep asking while coming closer until she can hear you. That way you'll know the range of her hearing. So that night, he's sitting uh, on his chair in the living room while his wife is in the kitchen making dinner. He estimates he's about 30 feet away. In a normal tone of voice, he says, what's for dinner? She didn't respond. 
So he gets up and walks to the kitchen doorway, about 20 feet away, and asks, what's for dinner? She still doesn't respond, so he walks 10 feet closer and asks, what's for dinner? She still doesn't say anything, so he gets right up beside her and says, what's for dinner? And she turns around and says, for the fourth time, we're having chicken. Well, we are in our second week of the BLESS sermon series, and you see that today is L, which stands for listen. Uh, It's also Reformation Sunday, which we celebrate as Lutherans, giving thanks for our heritage as a church that is open to change. I think it ties nicely with our theme for today because one of the first steps towards true and authentic change is listening. So we are going to talk about listening in order to build a relationship with our neighbors. Last week we asked you uh, in the B, begin with prayer to identify five people, five people who are actual neighbors where you live or work or play, and we asked you to begin by praying for them by name. We are asking God to bless these five people through us. And by praying for them, we might open ourselves to opportunities God will place before us that we might not otherwise recognize. Now that you've been able to think about those five names and pray for them for a week, we're going to consider the next step of building this relationship, which is to listen. Really listening and hearing what someone you've been praying for is saying and feeling maybe the kindest and most loving gift you can give to someone. David Augsburger said in caring enough to hear and be heard, being heard is so close to being loved that for the average person, they are almost indistinguishable. Listening moves us forward in our relationships as God uses us to bless others and change their lives. And when listening doesn't happen, either as the listener or the receiver, things feel off, don't they? A short personal story. My uh, path to our saviors includes first 19 years working in the church, and then just before I came here, seven years in the corporate world in a medical device company. I was in a group and had a manager that I really liked. Uh, The working relationships were good and creative, and I I just really liked the people too. And then, as sometimes happens, someone higher up in the company decided they would move me and my role to a different group and a new manager. And that person had never been a manager before and didn't know me. And the communication for how this was going to happen was, um, the best I can say, bungled. So the first time I went with this new manager, he literally had a checklist, and the conversation went like this. In this group, we do this, okay? And you have to do this, okay? These were things that made it not as good of a work environment for me, like taking away flexibility I'd previously had and removing some autonomy I had enjoyed. I found my body going from leaning forward to leaning back with arms crossed like this. I was so taken aback that I didn't know what to say, and my answers became just one-word answers. I was not my best self in this interaction either. Well, it took a while for that relationship to improve, which it did, but I think what I wanted and what I'd hoped for was to be heard for that person to want to get to know me and to understand and ask what was important to me and what I needed to do the job well. I bet you've had an experience of not being listened to, of not being heard. I mean, if you haven't had one within just the past week, you can probably consider yourself lucky. When we feel unheard, we begin to feel unknown. And when we're unknown, we're disconnected, not valued, not ourselves. 
Listening to understand is hard work, and it takes practice. When a friend or coworker or neighbor comes to us needing to talk about something, rather than listening un to understand, we can be prone to jump right into fix-it mode and be giving them two or three options for making it right. But the truth is, most people don't want our expertise. They want support. They just want to be heard and known and to know that we care. I don't know about you, but uh, for our staff and myself, we are feeling and absorbing some extraordinary amounts of tension and anxiety in our world right now. We are just over a week from a contentious and important presidential election. And I have said and will continue to say, our Saviors is a congregation that will hold our center around Jesus Christ. We will come together around the love and forgiveness and newness of life that we have in Christ's death and resurrection. We hold to our theological center that we are saved by grace through faith, our great Reformation teaching. And we know that we will be in worship with people who may vote different from us. But we commit to staying in relationship, holding each other in prayer. And today I would add listening. Not to have to agree but listening to understand that we might feel heard and ultimately know God's love through that. When the people in our lives feel unheard and unknown, it ultimately leaves them feeling isolated and unloved. If you want your, to love your neighbors and bless the people God has put in your path, you have to be intentional about listening and listening to understand. You know who was the ultimate listener? Jesus, of course. He modeled this second blessed practice for us in so many ways. He was motivated by love for every person he encountered. And not only did he perform miracles and teach life-changing truths, he also took the time again and again to show love in the most practical and simple way he listened. Luke's story of meeting Jesus, uh, of Jesus meeting the blind beggar is a great example. The man who was blind was sitting beside the road. He heard the crowd walking by and asked what was happening. Some people told him Jesus of Nazareth was passing by, and he decided he wanted to reach out to Jesus in the only way he knew how, by shouting, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And what did the crowd do? They shushed him. Shh, no, don't. But that only made him shout louder. And Jesus heard and stopped and asked that the man be brought to him. Take just a second to notice what happened there. Jesus wasn't necessarily looking for someone to heal that day. He was on his way to Jericho, one of the last stops on the way to Jerusalem to participate in the Passover feast. And Jericho was extra busy that time of year, hordes of people. And in the midst of them was a blind man crying out in all the noise, have mercy on me. In all that commotion, Jesus heard that singular voice. And while the anticipated healing does happen, something else happens first. Jesus asks him a question. What do you want me to do for you? While it may seem obvious what the man would want from Jesus, the question Jesus asks tells us something about who Jesus is. It shows that he didn't just assume he knew what people needed, and he doesn't just assume what you or I or other people need either. He asked questions and he listened. You want to bless your family and neighbors and friends? Consider imitating Jesus in the way he, that you listen to them. Don't just hear the words they say, but really listen. Put down your phone, turn off the television, slow down the busyness, and give them your full attention. Because that's how we really get to know the people in our lives. 
ultimately when we take the time to listen and get to know someone, that's when the people around us truly feel loved and blessed. Listening will also help us to understand people who are different than us. There's a story about, uh, told about a missionary group who went to India to serve the poor in a remote village. So they showed up with all sorts of supplies and workers ready to transform that village into a place of health and vitality. They first went to people living in a slum and said, we could build you a medical clinic to take care of the hurting people and the sick in your village, or we could buy to, buy, build a school to provide education so the next generation can work their way out of poverty, or we could build a church so that you could gather on the weekends and learn about God. And then they asked, what do you want us to do for you? This sounds a lot like the question that Jesus asked the blind beggar, doesn't it? But the people of the village responded with something the missionaries were not expecting at all. What we really need most, they said, is a mailbox. A mailbox? We can build you a medical clinic, a school, or a church building, and all you want is your own mailbox? The villagers went on to explain that in India, not having a mailbox means you don't have a zip code. And if you don't have a zip code, that means you do not exist on a map. Even if you're part of a community of 20,000 people, if you don't have a zip code, you're not recognized. And that means you're not eligible for government services. These villagers wanted an identity to become rec a recognized part of their own country. Had the missionaries not asked the question and listened, they never would have known that this was the people's greatest need. It may sound simple, but getting this village a mailbox was no small task. It took the group two years to work through the bureaucracy to get them registered with a zip code. But once they did, the village began to transform. We have so many people with a lot of pain in their lives right now. They are your neighbors. They are your coworkers. They are already in your life in some way. God wants each of them to be heard, to be known, and to feel loved. As a church of the Reformation that is constantly changing and reforming, may we hear this call to listen as a really important way to share God's love in this day and age, that it might be our way to change lives and change the world for the better. Thanks be to God. Amen. Oh, the
When we pray for one another, we bless one another. At this time, we join together to bring our prayers to God. Loving God, encourage us as we listen to one another that it might build community and help us experience your love. We pray for those relationships we want to enter into in a deeper way and ask for your guidance and care to move through us as we seek to bless our neighbors. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious God, continue to challenge this community to be ever reforming in our ministries and outreach efforts. Inspire creative ideas among us so that God's word of grace remains at the heart of our ministry. God of peace, we pray and hold out hope for peace and an end to the wars in Ukraine and throughout the Middle East. May all involved not give up on the vision of a better world where violence, hunger, and hate are no more. And we pray for our country during this divisive election season. Help us to trust that you are present with your never-ending love and grace, that you will not fail as you promise, and that we are safe in you. God, deliver the strength of your love and compassion to all who need it today. We pray for those who are lonely, anxious, ill, or struggling in any way. There are many. We especially name before you Sarah, Rain, Cindy, Gloria, Grady, Bryn, Tamara, Senya, Eddie, Matt, Mark, Barb, George, Brian, Lindsay, Terry, Dolores, Mert, Kelly, Pastor Margie, Javita, and David. And we pray for all who are grieving and ask for your comfort and care to sustain them. Send peace and comfort to those who have recently lost loved ones, including Nancy Calvo, on the loss of her sister, Sandra. Bless our ninth grade confirmation students who affirm their faith in the confirmation service yesterday. At Our Saviors, we give thanks for parents, sponsors, leaders, and all those who have helped them grow in their faith. Bless them in the next steps of their faith journeys. All these prayers, spoken and unspoken, we lift to you, trusting that you hear us and will answer in steadfast love. 
through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Well, we just prayed for our new confirmands and wanted to show you a picture of them. Our confirmation uh, worship service was yesterday, and uh, it was just a wonderful service. What a, a thing to be a part of where we lay hands on it. Our uh, family and grandparents and sponsors all pray for the young person as they affirm the promises made to them in their baptism. Uh, we give thanks for all who were part of this your support and your gifts make this ministry possible. Uh, so we, uh, as we consider our offering today, there are various ways you can give. If you're here in person, you can place your offering in the baskets on the stands as you leave. You can also always mail in a check, uh, use the QR code that's on the screen or on your announcement sheet or give through our website. And now we are blessed today to have a musical offering. So a few weeks ago, I went back to my home church in Burnsville and uh, went and worshipped with my 91-year-old father. Um, and I don't know if you've ever been in a church where you don't know the music or you a, a song is new. You sometimes sit back and they were singing a song I hadn't heard before. Um, and it's called Stand in Your Love. And the thing I noticed was it didn't matter if you knew it. It, it had something that kind of called to the congregation. And it didn't matter if you were 91 or middle-aged or, or young. Um, it, it just spoke to everybody. And I, it was such an overwhelming, um, powerful song. And so I brought it to the band and to Jennifer. And um, the band just embraced it. And so we want to bring it to you. Um, and you will find that even if you don't know it, there's um, a sing-along ability. Is that a word? It is now. Okay. <laughs> that, that I think um, will, will um, help you kind of join us in um, singing along, especially in the chorus. So I hope you enjoy it as much as I did. One, two, three, four. Mm -hmm. tries to roll over my thoughts and sorrow comes to steal the joy I own brokenness and pain is all I know I won't be shaken I won't be shaken Yeah. 
Thank you, Kathy and Van, for bringing us that message and song, this music. Very powerful and much needed words on this day. As we prepare for communion, just one word, and that is that you are all the invited guests of our Lord to share in the Lord's Supper here at Our Savior's. Let us pray. Loving God, you provide for our needs and gather us at your table. Bless our lives and the gifts we offer that they may be used to bless others for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Together we pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Just a few words of explanation as we serve communion this morning. If you are coming forward for communion, you'll see when the servers are ready at the front of your section, they'll give you a nod, go ahead and come forward, starting from the front then to the back. Center sections, you'll come up the center aisle and down returning by the side aisles. Those who are on the side sections, if you can come up along the wall and return again by those side aisles. When you reach your communion station, simply hold out your hands. We'll drop a wafer into your hand, and then you can take that wafer and move to the next person where you'll dip your wafer into the chalice, the red section. The larger section is wine, and the smaller section is grape juice if you would prefer. And after you've dipped that into the respective place, you may eat it and return to your seat. And if you have someone who does not take communion, feel free to bring them forward and we will provide a blessing for them. If you need gluten-free wafers, they're available at each of the stations. More details on the announcement sheet that you have. So, for those who are communing in place, Eric, at home, hear these words, the body of Christ given for you and the blood of Christ shed for you. I'll invite those who are assisting with communion to come forward at this time.
Please stand as you are able. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, which you have received, strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. God of all, in this meal of love and grace, you have strengthened us. Send us into a hurting world that we might share your love with our neighbors and change the world for the better. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. May the risen Lord guide your steps, fill you to overflow with love, and grant you courage, strength, and hope. The Lord bless you now and forever. Amen. One, two, three, four. <laughs>
Thank you, Ben. Blessed to be a blessing. Go in peace to love your neighbor. We will. Thanks be to God. One, two, three, four. <laughs> Thank you.